What's up everybody, it's Eric Johnson from Airtay Throws Nation. In today's video, we are gonna do a quick technical comparison between Olympic champion Ryan Krauser and Olympic finalist Zane Weir of Italy. Amazing throwers, so let's check it out. Okay guys, so here's what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at two different throwers. Um, clearly, Ryan Krauser is the greatest of all time. He is just going to continue to build on a legacy of consistency and massive distances. Um, and it's going to be exciting to see, is he going to break his own world record? You know, how many times that's going to happen? The guy's absolutely incredible. He's a technical machine, physical specimen, and just the consistency is off the charts. Zane Weir is a guy who just rose literally up from kind of obscurity to all of a sudden, boom, at the Grace Olympic final, he's fifth place. If you haven't checked out our Thrower X uh, interviews and podcasts, check that out. Great interview, super cool young guy, and uh, really interesting story, but pound for pound, really exciting. At the games when he threw just over 70 feet, he was weighing roughly about 245 pounds. That is absolutely insane. And so some people ask, well, God, he must have amazing strength numbers. And that's what's scary. He doesn't, but he's doing a lot of good things technically. And it clearly speaks to the level of athletic ability this guy has. So here are two absolutely phenomenal athletes, two of the greatest you know, athletes of all time. If you're fifth at the Olympics, you have etched uh, your place in history, but Ryan Krauser, clearly the the dominant legend versus another young thrower who is, uh, like I said, just really burst onto the scene with an amazing Olympic performance. So let's, that being said, lots of intro and lots of talk. Um, let's do this. So we're going to take a look. Now, again, for those of you out there, our whole system is about a chain reaction. We're showing connection between what you do at the start and how that influences and sets up a finish that's going to be successful or not. So here's what I like to do. I don't coach these athletes clearly. I've had the opportunity, you know, briefly a few years ago, I got to just kind of ask Ryan a couple of questions. I get to see him compete live in a, a bunch of scenarios. And I've had the opportunity to talk with his dad and I've had an opportunity to interview Zane. So I do have a tiny bit of insight. But again, I don't coach these guys. I have no idea. Of course, I don't coach these guys because if I did, everybody would know that. But um, the point is that these guys do some really phenomenal things and we do have a little bit of insight. So let's take a peek here. So pillar one, we talk about it. And Zane, when we talked, he's a very feeling-based thrower. So when we talk about Krauser, the, the limited time, I think he's a very feeling-based too, but he's also an amazing technician. And so when we look at this, we look at, like, first of all, is the setup and the wind. So when we go, we set up, this is what we call pillar two. This is what we call setting up maximum power. And you're going to notice the time of their lengthened out, the chest stays forward and it has to be, there's a window. It can't be too far forward, it can't too, be too far back. You have to have this motion because as you move, as we call pillar two to three, moving here and then moving into the throw, right? This is gonna be the key. You're gonna notice that both of these throwers really get that left foot facing the direction of the toe board. And when the heel can be down, right? This is one of the things you'll catch in that interview with Zane. If the heel's a little lower, that's going to help position the center of mass and allow the athlete to sprint into the circle better. So sometimes people advocate higher heel lower. There's a comfort zone. And again, you'll notice everything we talk about when we're talking about technique and coaching inside with our six pillar system, we're talking about windows. There's a there's optimal and there's suboptimal, right? And then there's there's that perfect spot. If you if you go outside of that window in a lot of these technical positions, the whole throw falls apart. So that's the physics and the mechanical aspect. So now what we do is when we talk this, this is the sprint. And one of the things that you'll notice where Krauser's chest is up, everything, the shoulders and hips are super levels. But you're going to notice this. We talk about level shoulders, level hips. And we're going to talk about, so you're going to see Zane's got pretty level hips, but he starts to dip this, but it's not bad. He, out of his own mouth, said he's a little too far forward, and I would agree with that, but there's a lot of really good things he does. 
What's the key with both of these things? How fast do they get to the middle? And you're going to notice when they get to the middle, they're really quick. And you're going to notice that Krauser is starting to kind of torque the position. You're going to notice that the left foot is getting closer to the toe board faster. The faster you can get that left foot back on the ground or that block leg foot back on the ground, allow the delivery leg and to be working around and into the finish, the further you're going to throw because it's faster and it's more ground time. When you're in the air, some people teach jumping up and kind of landing in the middle, that is slow. You don't want to do that. And you think if you look here, now what's impressive about Weir's, again, like I said, 6'3", 245 pounds and not super strong versus 6'7"-ish, 330 pounds and really strong. So this is why this is a 76 foot throw and why this is a 70 foot, you know, and a half foot throw, right? So um, amazing competition. So when you see this, this is what we call again pillar four. You see that stretch and you see all that stretch. That stretch reflex is going to create this whipping action to open that arm. The ground, they get down on the ground so now they can work. And what you're going to see is I love how Krauser stays, he lifts, right? We talk about lifting the shot, but he stays low to the ground. So he's going to get loaded on the legs and he's going to really crank that hip. You see how that hip cranks through and notice his angle of release. You're going to notice that his angle is a little lower than Zane's angle. So that's interesting. So don't try to throw too high. The most optimal angle is around uh, 35, 37 degrees, kind of that kind of range. 36 degrees, I think, is most optimal. So this is where you want. Um, if you go above 38, I think it's getting too high. And if you're below 34, it's too low. So so just the key things here, what do these guys really do from a simple technical standpoint? The things that you want to understand is they are moving always. We always talk about this. They move around the axis. This is what we call pillar two to three, right? They're on balance. They've got everything. The sweep leg is wide. This is a counterbalance, right? This is long. This is long. That's a counterbalance. If, if, if this goes narrow, that's going to lead to over rotation and that is a problem. So we go with that after we've got come out of that. Now we've got to keep the hips underneath the shoulders. That's that's most optimal. You're going to notice that Krauser does that extremely well. And now you're going to see how the shoulders, though, again, Zane does a great job of level shoulders. You're going to watch Krauser. He's going to level that out. He's really torqued. The arm opens out long. This is really key. This arm has to go this way. We've talked about that for years. People have seen that on, on YouTube videos. We posted up five, six years ago. We've always taught to take that arm out. That's going to be the counterbalance. Look at the position here. This allows for the axis to stay here. Look from the hip to the ankle. Look from the hip to the ankle, right? You're going to see that. Look where the chest is and look how that arm's out. That's going to allow the throwers to come up and look at how square both of these throws are so Krauser incredible look at how the shot stays low and where the elbow is super important look at this again now you're going to notice his is just a little higher right and you're going to notice that Zane has the more traditional rotational thrower long arm whereas Krauser kind of pulls it in a little bit and when I had asked his dad one time I said is that a conscious thing or, you know, and he says, you know, it's kind of just the byproduct because he glided for a long time. So he still has a little bit there. But you'll notice it's it is very rotational. And if you ever look at a throw of Krauser out of high school, you're going to notice he kind of has that rotational glide finish. So clearly it works extremely well. Look at it as he comes through. But you're going to notice right here just a little bit of difference in height. Now you're going to notice when we chalk off the height of release that Krauser's a little bit lower. So that's important as a rotational thrower because speed is the key. If it gets too high, it's that parabolic curb. Too high, it's gonna come short. Too low, it goes short. You wanna find that sweet spot and that's one of the things you're looking for. Okay guys, so um, just, uh, you know, just kind of throwing some insights as a huge fan. What are the things that they do well? And again, you're going to notice that they move around. That's, this is traditional. This is what our six pillars are about, about teaching the throw and ultimately teaching coaches and throwers how to identify your individual need as a thrower. And these are two different guys with two different styles, but mechanically essentially the same positions. That's what our six pillars again teach. 
and then our pillar drills and stuff are meant to formulate how do you optimize your movement at each of the six pillars. So at any rate, these guys are awesome. It's just fun to look at, look at all the technical things, but generally, what did you want to take away is looking, getting on the ground, staying on balance. Where's the path of the sweep and the balance arm through the finish? And now you're going to watch as they square up. Stay square and level, turn and twist through. Zane does that extremely well. So does Krauser. He's lifting a little higher. And I don't know, I would think over time, maybe as that comes down a little less, I think that will increase distance for him. And he will continue, him and his coach will continue to perfect technique. And it's interesting to just look at some of the subtle changes in Krauser from 2016 to now. And he's obviously just more refined and throwing bigger distances and everything else. So these are just two great examples of what really good rotational shot put technique looks like. And look at the difference between a 70 foot throw and a 76 foot throw. Pretty awesome. And hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Now, again, if you did, be sure to hit that like button. Super helpful for us. Uh, throw some comments. If you'd like anything or anything you have any questions about this video or other videos you'd like to see, hit it in the comments below. And of course, if you're looking for coaching information, uh, check out our throwing chain reaction system link in somewhere around this video, probably down below in the description. Okay, guys, you guys have a good one and we'll see you on the next video.